Um, looks like I'm wearing a new hat today. My original hat is ag economics, and today I'm going to have animal production or li livestock production. Uh, I'm not going to talk about any kind of approach or metho methodology in any technologies here. I mean that the previous speaker in the morning was talking about, but all I'm trying to um, talk about is the emerging opportunities in livestock in Nepal, and particularly talking about the large ruminant cattle in Buffalo. Um, before going into the actual content of my presentation, I would just like to very quickly highlight the importance of livestock in the farming system in Nepal. Um, apart from different types of region, the livestock is being very important and integral, integral part in the farming system in Nepal. The foremost and very important is that the livestock is one of the key source of fertilizer, meaning basically the nitrogen, uh, nitrogen uh, nutrient, uh, nutrient for, the uh, for the plant. And uh, the livestock is the major source, key source for the fertilizers for the farmer, uh, farmers in Nepal. And the majority of fertilizer, I mean, the derived by Nepalese farmers from the livestock um, manure. That is traditionally and that is being practiced to date. And apart from that, um, I just wanted to show in the slide is that the strong interdependency and interrelationship between agriculture, forest, and livestock in Nepal. Talking about some government statistics in livestock in Nepal, um, as I mentioned, livestock is one of the crucial uh, subsector in agriculture in Nepal. Uh, livestock contributes about 12% in national GDP. And if you talk about the agriculture GDP, out of total ag GDP, 27% is contributed by livestock alone. In terms of milk production, annually in Nepal, uh, buffalo contributes 70% and the rest by the, by the cattle. Again, in terms of meat, buffalo contributes the highest, the 65%, and remaining are the goats and the poultry. Now, the livestock. Livestock is the main source, again, where uh, the, uh, most of the significant farm operations are derived from uh, the bullock power because the farm mechanization in Nepal is still in the rudimentary stage. So there, there are a lot to be done. So the farmers are basically dependent on bullock power for the top uh, power in Nepal. Going on, the livestock is now, now the source, a major source of livelihood mainly because among the different types of livestock in Nepal, goat, cattle, and buffalo are the key, key uh, types of livestock in Nepal. Goat, out of 75% of total farm household in Nepal, keep the goat, and then 60 and 65% is cattle and buffalo. And uh, I think, um, I think uh, more majority of the farm household, they, they derive their livelihoods from the livestock and uh, it's, I think it's safe to say that the livestock is a handy source of money and even at the crisis, crisis situation, any kind of crisis situation is kind of insurance against the crop failure as well. So what are the realities in livestock related, uh, livestock and the competitiveness in the country? Um, out of total populations of livestock, about 7 million cattle and 5 million buffalo, the ten, only 10% and 10% in case of cattle and 25% in case of buffalo are the improved one. And rest, all are the local breeds. And because of that, we can see, we can see the data here that the local breed, like cattle, we have only 450 liters of milk per lactation and 900 liters in case of buffalo. So there is long way to reach. And the experience, even USAID's past experience shows that the Nepalese crossbreed, not the pure breed I'm talking about, I'm talking about Nepalese crossbreeds, cattle, and uh, buffalo, there's 1,600 and 1,500 liters per lactation that we have recorded. Continuing the, talking about the potentiality, um, this is the experience that we had from 2010 to 2012, the three years, 
I will talk about a little bit later, that the, the program called DCIP, Dairy Cattle Improvement Program in Nepal, where we had funded also, um, the record shows that the milk production, milk production was as high as, as 3,000 liters per lactation in case of cow. And uh, now looking at the realities, the per capita requirement in case of milk is 25 ml per person per day against 140. So which is very, very low. And therefore, therefore, there is a lot of possibilities and potentiality of reaching, the de reaching these potentials by just improving the breed. So what are the emerging opportunities in large ruminant cattle and buffalo in Nepal? Um, I had an opportunity to involve, to join the livestock assessment, cattle and buffalo assessment in 2012 that was done jointly by BFS and USDA. And it was really amazing to see in the field, in the community, that there is increasing investment from the private sector in milk collection, milk processing, and distributions. And I believe that that is creating a strong pool for the raw, raw milk in Nepal. And because of that, there is a lucrative market for the, uh, for the milk and dairy products. And uh, there is a lot of attraction to the private sector in, in, in Nepal, in the community level. Therefore, we can see a lot of change agent from the private sector in Nepal. They are appearing in the rural market, rural communities, and acting as a breeze between poor household and the milk markets in Nepal. Therefore, the market is valuing milk component and the smallholder purchases, and they are getting benefit out of it. Not only this, um, Nepal in the farming system is well known that the farmers cooperative only in, I mean, in vegetables or seed production, but we, the, it's increasing the farmers manage cooperative in the milk collections and cooling system. So what are the options to reach or to fill those gaps? Of course, improving the dairy uh, animal productivity by different means, like identifications of outstanding breeds or outstanding animals for the breeding purpose. And, uh, um, having a system in place to procure and manage the superior genetic materials such as semen. And uh, um, private, sector, private sectors, they are key. So the private sectors can be brought on board in, the, in, in artificial insemination services and recording scheme, where at the moment almost all the AI services are done by the public uh, JT, JT or agriculture livestock technicians. So not only these, these, these have to be combined with other management practices related to um, livestock like feeding and, and, and animal health. So what are the policy environment for these to take away? Um, th this morning, the Secretary, Minister, uh, Minister of Agriculture, he was talking about the poly agricultural development strategy. Yes, this ADS, agricultural development strategy is the very recent, it was just done la uh, towards the end of last year. And this is the agricultural long-term agricultural development strategy, the 20 year strategy, costed for 10 years, and uh, with the help of 14 different donors in Nepal, including us in US, uh, USAID. Um, and uh, of course, the strategy has been, is, is waiting for the endorsement from the cabinet and we have recently completed the elections and hopefully this has been endorsed by the cabinet and because this is a very, very priority as the secretary said this morning from the Minister of Agriculture as well. So the strategy talks about or policy talk, talks about or emphasize in developing the livestock policy that includes the breeding development and animal health, which is lacking at the moment or not very explicitly uh, talked about. And also talked about to strengthen the capacity of existing existing and planned livestock service center and sub-centers, and capacity building of improved breed production <coughs> uh, with different, different uh, mechanisms that the documents talk about. And uh, support implementation, this is very important. That is what US, uh, the mission is also considering now. The support implementation of livestock insur insurance scheme, which is very, very rudimentary stage at the moment in the country. And uh, the policy document also gives some options how that can be done. And in uh, livestock, uh, livestock 
breed improvement, availability or management of liquid nitrogen is, is a major constraint in the country. So the policy has, has emphasized on, on making, making reliable and efficient in, in nitrogen, liquid nitrogen for AI program. Uh, establishment of voucher, voucher, uh, voucher system for animal breed is also mentioned in the policy document, but I would say we need to look at a little bit carefully this, how that, you know, this can be handled. So what are the ongoing efforts? Yes, I said uh, DCIP, Dairy Cattle Implement Program, this, is, this was originally or initially jointly implemented by Nepal Agriculture Research Council and the Department of Livestock Services from um, three years, from 2008 to 2010. And later it was continued by USAID from 2010 to 2012 for three years um, as a food security promotion project of the mission. What were the component in the, in the program was basically uh, genetic improvement for buffalo and cattle and development and management of multiplier herd and other things. So this is my final slide. Uh, so where are we in the mission? What are we, I mean, are we considering the livestock? Um, when we were designing our strategy, FTOB strategy for the missions and five years Kishan project, uh, we had not envisioned or had any uh, provision for I mean, including uh, livestock in the strategy, so we don't have at the moment. But looking at all these opportunity, emerging opportunities and gaps, plus the request, request from the Ministry of Agriculture to consider large ruminant, and we are now considering uh, a kind of robust program on livestock, basically uh, cattle, in, cattle in Buffalo, uh, under our Feed the Future strategy. Thank you. To learn more about scaling and how you can contribute to this growing body of knowledge, please visit agrilinks.org slash scaling.